Uh, just recently, we received uh, communication from the NC2A in regards to uh, uh, possible and alleged uh, major violations as they relate to our men's basketball program. The allegations that I knowingly acted contrary to the sanctions imposed on me for violations that occurred, that occurred while I was at Oklahoma are not true. It is my responsibility to take whatever actions are necessary to ensure that our men's basketball program lives up to the high level of integrity that has always been its hallmark, and I am determined to do just that. Good evening and welcome into Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Ronan O'Shea. It's been one of the wildest weeks in Indiana sports history and it all started last Wednesday when the NCAA announced five major recruiting violations facing head coach Calvin Sampson and the historic IU basketball program. In the midst of one of the best seasons since coach Bobby Knight left the program, Indiana now faces the difficult task of what to do with coach Sampson for the rest of the season. It is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the Hoosier basketball coach, Kelvin Sampson. I came to Indiana for one reason. I think you can win championships at, at Indiana. When I think back to... <laughs> I, I think back to um, being an outsider looking in and I think about Indiana basketball, you, you think about a, a place that has not just championships, but championship tradition. Tradition's important. But upon coming to Indiana to become the 26th head coach of the Hoosiers, Kelvin Sampson did so while bringing with him sanctions for impermissible phone calls made while the coach of the Oklahoma Sooners. On Friday, President Michael McRobby had the following statement. First, let me say that I am deeply disappointed by these allegations and I share the disappointment with all those who love and support Indiana University. I fully understand the desire by many people for us to move quickly to bring this situation to resolution, and we intend to do just that. Let there be no doubt, these are serious allegations of misconduct. As President, I believe the most important measure of our success in intercollegiate athletics is not in the win-loss column. Rather, it is in how well we measure up to our own high standards for good sportsmanship, academic success, the welfare of our student athletes, and playing by the rules. Now, after Saturday's win over Michigan State, Coach Sampson had very little to say about the allegations against him. I don't have any comment on that. You basketball is so much bigger than one person. Um, the, the game will always be about the, the, the players. I was happy for them. But through it all, the team remains behind their coach and consider him part of their family. We're just, we're just as a family. I mean, whatever happens, happens. But we're just, we're just fighting together as a team. I, I try to be a father to them, and then that's all. I just try to be their father, you know, and and. Uh, I'm stern with them, I comfort them, um, I care about them, and I coach them. Because we're a family and can't get between the family. And so, you know, coach come in and he work us out and we practice just like we've been doing all season. So it's, nothing's changed. We've been through uh, adversity all through, I mean, throughout this whole year. And I mean, we just got to just keep on playing. In one of the most highly anticipated games of the year, the men's basketball team welcomed the Michigan State Spartans into Assembly Hall Saturday night. ESPN and the college game day crew were in town for the big game as the Hoosiers looked to get their first win over a ranked opponent this year. Well, it's certainly not the best of times for Indiana men's basketball, but for at least a few hours, Hoosier fans can relax as ESPN's game day crew made their inaugural visit to one of the true meccas of college basketball, Indiana's very own Assembly Hall. 
And these Hoosier fans lined up bright and early to get a front seat for today's events. Since 2 a.m., uh, we just wanted to be front row before college game day. I just want to get on TV, you know, see what they have to say about our program, and basically get on TV. And I'm looking forward to Deirdre Phelps interacting with the crowd. I heard he did that in Louisville, so I'm pretty looking forward to just like seeing all those guys. Uh, we got here at about, uh, I would say, 8:30. Uh, we were waiting in line outside. They were nice enough to give us free donuts and orange juice. Uh, then they opened the doors. We were waiting inside for a while. Then they lowered the gates. It was a bull rush, everyone was screaming, you know, everyone's wicked excited, it's awesome. Okay, we got here at 8 and there was already a line, like, back to McNutt. They got here, we got donuts right away, orange juice, everybody was hyped up. Right when a Michigan State person came, everybody booed them, which is great. So, it's really hyped up. No matter what the controversy was surrounding the team at the time, the players were ready and focused to go into the newly striped out Assembly Hall. Allegations of infractions and possible lies by coach Kelvin Sampson, but he is still the head coach of the Hoosiers. Pick it up early on and it's Raymar Morgan with the steal ahead to Drew Neitzel with the finish. He had 14 first half points for the Spartans and Kelvin Sampson wants a timeout. Later on Armand Bassett ahead to Demarcus Ellis. He's got the alley. DJ White with the oop emphatically dunking at home. He had the first six Hoosier points. The Hoosier D was tough all day, and here the shot clock winds down, but Neitzel cashes in on a prayer, and the Spartans lead by 11. IU counters, though, with their secret weapon. The ladies call him Dre. Some prefer D, but that cuts the state lead down to four points. Assembly Hall was rowdy on this day, folks, and this was a game changer as Eric Gordon blocks Neitzel's shot on the break, gets the flush, and an 11-point Spartan lead is erased. A little bit later, Armand Bassett gives the Hoosiers their first lead in over 11 minutes of the game. With the tray ball, he had five points and five assists in the game. Scary moment for Hoosier fans, though, as DJ White tumbles to the ground, clutching the back of his left knee. He left the game for good, but would return to the bench later on. We have more on that story later in our show. Without their senior captain, IU would go on a 17-4 run and take back the lead. Here's Crawford with the three. He had 12 in the game. Hoosiers by nine. Halftime fast approaching as Chris Allen drops this trifecta and Izzo's crew will not go away easily. Later on, second half, Eric Gordon, he had himself a ball game, folks, in prime time on the national stage. He gets this bucket and one. He would make good on the freebie. A little later, he'll take all three of these points. He had 28 in the contest, set an IU freshman scoring record in the process. Running out of time for State, Neitzel with the glove but cannot get the finish and Armand Bassett will come up with the loose ball and find Juco transfer Jamarcus Ellis all the way down for the slam. Stick a fork in the Spartans. They are done, folks. An emotional game surely for the Hoosier, and Bassett gives his coach a big hug. 80-61 Indiana triumph.